So let's start here um, with the gameplay details. Let's start um, right here with uh, Robbie Calland. He did uh, some great deep, deep dives here on uh, Uprox. Um, he says, overall, I think fans will be very happy with the initial offering and the resurrection of the franchise, and there are some real differentiators between it and Madden that make it feel like a standalone, unique game. Here we look at all the various elements of the game that EA Sports has added, and I'll offer my thoughts on how those translated once actually on the sticks. So uh, let's talk about, he talks about playbooks. All 134 teams have a unique playbook. That's pretty awesome right there. Pretty impressive and in-depth. Uh, which the game goes to give their actual style. In the old games, everyone had their own playbook, but it was from a small pool of play. So we all know that have played the game, you know, the old NCAA Football 14, I'm sure most of us are probably even still playing that shit, right? You had a lot of the same plays, just, you know, in different formations. But sounds like that's not the case. In this game, there are 10 specific play styles from Air Raid to the Triple Option. More on option updates below. Excited to hear about that. But within those styles, each team has its own distinct look and feel, of course. The stated goal was to give every fan an authentic feel of playing with their team, while representation, excuse me, while presentation and visuals were important to that. The gameplay also had to be differentiated so the fan base felt uh, truly unique to their style. We know PFF helped them. We knew a little bit about that detail. Skip ahead here. Uh, you also be able to create a custom playbook. Uh, you guys know that's the shit that excites me the most right there. Can't wait to get on. That's gonna be the first thing I do when I fire this game up. You'll be able to save custom audibles. This is not expected to be ready for launch, but they did promise it was coming. That's cool. So they don't have the custom audibles ready yet, but at least they have the custom playbooks ready. On defense, the zone covered shells are much more refined than the old games, and you can even craft your own preferred sc uh, scheme in the custom playbook if you want. That's different, I think, um, as far as if you're able to adjust the zones and how they function in custom playbook. That's more detailed. That shit's cool. They have half-field coverages, so you can zone up on one half and go man on the other. You can also disguise coverages, which is important with the pre-snap, which is something that's new to this game. Uh, given how much the game is leaning into player skill sets and talent level mattering more than ever, the variability in picking your playbook or creating your own is going to be key. I love that. I love that shit. And vice versa, making sure in a dynasty you're recruiting talent that uh, fits your needs. So continuing on here, I'm reading through the gameplay details, guys. Then we're going to go into their dynasty article and then their road to glory article. Um, you know, any thoughts you have on these gameplay details, throw them in the chat there. If you're watching live, any questions or whatever, I'll try and answer those as well. And like I said, if you know, I'm doing this one earlier in the day, but I'm going to do another one later in the day um, where I'm probably going to be playing some Madden as well and answering some questions. So if you get a chance to dive in on some of these details here and you want to catch the stream later, be on the lookout for that one on Twitch and on YouTube here, JC's Pop Culture. And be sure, follow me on both there. All 22 plus player differentiation system. The first thing they talked about was their all 22 plus system, which ensures that each player on the field plays to their skill level. With such a wide variance in skill levels in the college game, they really wanted to make sure you felt that. A star player will really stand out in this game, while a backup or freshman with a low rating is going to struggle to make a positive impact. That was noticeable in playing the game, and you have to know your personnel and make sure you're getting in the ball in the right spots. A star receiver is going to go up and get the ball over defenders, while a lesser receiver is going to struggle to make a catch in traffic. So that kind of goes a little bit with what Mike Straw talked about, you know, when he was talking about the difference in players of different levels. Your quarterback's various skill ratings will impact your ability to push the ball downfield, throw outside from the far hash, and accurately fit the ball into windows. Again, that was felt when I bounced around from team to team, testing out how the game plays with top-ranked power teams as opposed to smaller schools. You won't be able to do the same things with those small schools and it's going to be incumbent on you the player to manage that that's awesome enhanced computer ai so this is a good detail i actually just read this one for the first time uh right before i started up the stream i saw someone share this on twitter uh but this is cool because it sounds like the ai in this game is actually going to be tough maybe we won't have to make as many slider adjustments because maybe if you play on your know, all-american heisman level it's going to be tough starting out and for a while maybe it'd be a challenge um <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. One thing that was immediately noticeable once I started playing the game was how much smarter the computer opponent component is now. It used to be extremely easy to manipulate the computer, but that will not be the case in this game, especially at higher difficulty levels. I started all American because that's what I always played on NCAA, and I was having absolute fits with the defense. The computer now has all the same tools as the user and will use them. The coverages are much smarter, with windows closing much faster in the passing game than they used to, especially against zone coverages. They're also better at disguise, disguising coverages and blitzes, and you'll have the ability to see the whole field as a passer. Defenses will adapt to how you're playing with real-time coaching that makes adjustments to what they're running to force you to continually differentiate your play calling. No longer can you spam the same few plays over and over to exploit the co same coverage the defense keeps running. If you show the defense the same play one too many times, it's likely headed back the other way. That's good shit, too excited about that and here's one that i was excited to learn about because it sounds like this is going to be a nice detail you know 
a lot of people kind of wrote it off, myself included, when they uh, talk, featured the wear and tear system because it just kind of sounds like, you know, stamina from the old games. But sounds like everything that goes into this is going to be definitely more detailed, including um, I saw something about like pre-play. Your players are going to have, you know, show like their body to show like their health. And they'll have areas that are like green, orange, or red, depending on how many t hits they've taken to certain areas of their bodies. Shit like that's all going to go into this wear and tear system. The biggest addition to the game that is college football specific is wear and tear. This will be the most controversial part of the game that will require the most tuning from the EA Sports team. All right, that second sentence is a little bit fucking scary. Not going to lie, guys. Um, and that's one thing I was worried about with this shit. Is this going to be something that pisses me off? Because you guys know sometimes with stamina in the old game, um, if you were using that turbo too much or whatever in, in 14, your guy was tired. It's immediate. He gets hit. It's either injury or fumble. And that's what I was worried about with this. But we'll see how it happens. The idea comes from a good place, and I think as they tune, it will be a welcomed addition to the game. Basically, they wanted to stop gamers from being able to find success spamming the same play over and over, making it so as players take hits, they lose attributes and ratings, which I understand the underlying thing behind that, and I really appreciate it, man, because uh, there are certain players that you would play in online dynasties, man. They'd have their go-to play, and they would just run that shit over and over, and it, what, what can you do if the game's not going to adapt to it? Uh, but at least here, they're trying to account for that, and it seems like they're doing a lot to account for these user versus user plays, not so much just user versus CPU even. They made it clear that this isn't a fatigue system like the old NCAA games. Instead, the way it works, each body part is broken out and has different player attributes and skill ratings attached to it. As you accumulate hits over the course of the game, you'll be able to see where a guy's taking damage, and his skill ratings in the attribute tied to that body part will decrease. For example, uh, throwing power and throw accuracy for a quarterback's throwing arm even. Uh, what kind of hits you take will matter, as not all hits are created equal in the physics-based system. Getting your quarterback hit by a big defensive tackle will do more damage uh, than a corner on a blitz. A bigger, stronger player will suffer less wear and tear versus a smaller, speedier guy. This means managing your player's health will be vital. If you like to run the read option, you will better you better be careful with your quarterback and running back because if they get tagged on hits, they'll lose ratings. Interesting. This also means hospital balls are a thing. And if you throw your receiver into a big hit, they're going to get lit up and lose some ability. So be careful, you know, throwing across the middle right there with somebody waiting to tee off on that dude. Uh, that means those players want to spam the slant round against the zone, get ready to learn how to diversify your offensive attack or have your receivers get hurt. In playing the game, you notice the wear and tear system quickly, and it does make you think about spreading the touches out. That makes life even more difficult with a smaller school team because the all 22 plus system, you might only have one really good receiver uh, on the roster. You know, so if you're playing with one of those small schools, you only got a couple star players, you're not going to be able to feed them the whole game, unfortunately. You're going to have to give it to some of those lesser players as well. Uh, one of the guys I was talking to, had to lead a game-winning touchdown drive with his backup quarterback because his starter got hit so much. He had lost 47 points off of his rating. Okay, so then maybe that goes into a little bit of the tuning and shit that he was talking about because that seems a bit excessive if my quarterback can lose, lose up to like 50 overall points in a game, if that's what he's talking about. Uh, that's going to be an adjustment that you have to manage, and I expect it to be a point of frustration for some and a spot that needs continual tuning from EA, like I said there. New passing system. Now, here's what we're talking about, and I think we'll get some more details about this tomorrow and some of the new kicking system and shit. Um, while wear and tell will require the biggest adjustment to game strategy when it comes to actual gameplay, the thing players will have to really get used to is the new passing system. It works like the old MVP baseball 05 throwing system. I don't know what that means. Where you have a meter for each throw, and the longer you hold it, the harder you throw. This allows you to layer the ball from feathery high-arcing lobs that drop in over the defense to intermediate throws over a linebacker or to a laser that fits in a tight window before a defender can get there. So I like that. I do like that because, you know, remember on the old games, you really only had, you know, the ability to kind of lob it or the ability to bullet it, depending on how hard you push the button. So it still is kind of dependent on how hard you push the button, I guess, because you're kind of holding it down. But there's going to be a meter that kind of shows you how you're doing it. So that's that's pretty good. I like that. Gives you much more control over passes than the old tap to lob, hold to rifle passing system, but does require you to really put in some time to get used to it. So kind of as expected, there's going to be, you know, an adjustment period with this game with a lot of this new shit. I threw a lot of interceptions in my first couple of games trying to get used to it for a couple of reasons. One is if you hold it down too long to go into the red and throw an inaccurate ball, sometimes right into the chest of an underneath defender. That's kind of similar to uh, to Madden. I mean, it sounds like obviously different, you know, in, in some ways, but in Madden, it's very much like that as well, um, you know, because I've been playing Madden 24 a little bit and streaming that some, and you can do that as well on Madden. If you don't hold the button right or if you, you don't have your footwork right, you can throw an accurate ball. Um, the meter 
gearing is skill ratings based, so you'll have to get used to your guys' ability and how long you can hold it down before you get into the danger area. So that's interesting. I'm sure guys, you know, with lower rating, their meter will probably move quicker, making it harder for you to, you know, get it right. Whereas, you know, guys with higher ratings, I'm sure their meter will move slower. That means throwing down the field is much more difficult with worse quarterbacks. So you really need to be cognizant of your guy's skill set when calling plays. From there, there's some delay for throws uh, that you hold the meter down on. You have to really throw with anticipation. That's interesting. I had a couple of picks where I saw a guy getting open, tried to rifle it, but in the half second, I was trying to hold the meter down, the window closed. So you almost have to, that's almost makes it more realistic, like a real quarterback. You have to anticipate him getting open and kind of throw it while he's still covered or start, you know, your meter going at that point. That's cool. The same can happen trying to float the ball out there as you have to count for where your quarterback's going to lay it. That is, again, realistic how football works, but an adjustment you have to make in a video game. While frustrating at first, once I got the field down with someone and started to see the field a little better, I really enjoyed the control it provides. One of the great frustrations of the old game was trying to throw to a receiver who was open between the linebackers and safeties, and they jump up and catch that. Obviously, that's what he's talking about. Running the ball in line play. Now, here's something I want to hear. I'm more of a run guy. It's always been me. The new passing system will likely be a bit divisive among players as the meter won't be for everybody. Even if I think once you get the hang of it, it'll be a net positive. But what I think people will absolutely love is how much better running the ball is in this game. If you've not played a Madden game, you likely haven't seen the jump and improvement in how running game works. Linemen function like actual linemen, independent of each other. In past games, you could only really uh, program linemen to block in collectives, meaning the run game was far more boomer bust. Um, of course, now the running game is much smoother and more lifelike. I found it more enjoyable than ever. For example, if you run outside zone, your linemen are going to block as they would in real life. It'll be easy to hit your read and react to the hole that opens up. So you know, you're running that stretch zone, you're running that wide zone. You kind of can see the lane and then cut up field where you need to. Uh, that brings more skill into the run game, asking the player to be patient than matching the right trigger and hoping the designed hole opens up, uh, which is nice. In college, this also impacts running the option where your decision making has to be on point uh, with some updates to how it all works. Now, here's this is interesting, guys. The new option system, this is one of the main things I wanted to highlight because this sounds really cool, uh, the way that they've changed this, and sounds like it'll be both, you know, more rewarding and also, you know, more, I guess, realistic too. The new option system in the game will require an adjustment pit, uh, period as they flip the functionality of the X slash A uh, on a read slash triple option. So, you know, used to be you're making that read on your read option, your triple option to the dive man, to the running back, whatever, you know, you hit A to hand it off. They realized the holding X to hand it off was backwards to how options actually work, where the decision is really for the quarterback to pull it. So you now have to hit the button to pull the ball back out of the running back's hand. And for anyone that's got read option, must remember the old franchise, that will take some time. So it's the opposite. Um, you know, used to be you'd hit, hit the button to hand it off, which now they've kind of flipped it to where you hit the button to pull it instead, which is actually, you know, like I said, more realistic. Um, so you now have to get hit the button to pull the ball button out of the – and that's for read option muscle memory with the old franchise. It's going to take some time. You have more reads to make on the triple option speed option with the read, uh, keep, and pitch option that actual QBs have to find. I tried running my hand at the triple with Navy, who it should be noted is awful in the game, so that didn't help. It did pretty terribly. By the second half, I had a little bit more of a feel for it where there was a lot of plays where I didn't even get to keep uh, – pitch portion of the triple because my quarterback will get swallowed up by a defensive tackle after the original mess point. That is to say, fair warning for anyone to try to start a dynasty uh, with Navy. I'll also note that the read option is no longer the cheat code it was in 14, where you can just read the crashing in. If you're right, you typically picked up a minimum five yards. The improve AI will start to send help with defensive backs and linebackers quickly filling gaps or adjust the defense with play calls that won't even get you to read at all. That said, the RPO is now a feature, and that's all about time. And didn't run many RPOs. This person didn't, uh, Robbie Calland here. But make sure you get the ball out quickly. But I think, you know, talking about how the defense responds to the read option more there, that's when your RPOs are going to come in because if you're having success with that read option, you know, on that pool and he's talking about their the AI starting to send help, then if they do, you might have somebody coming behind where they're sending that help on a pass option and be able to hit that as well. So interesting how that works. And here's another big one, guys. We, we just heard the talk about home field advantage. I mentioned on one of my streams, you know, it was on my wish list talking about bringing stadium pulse back. You used to be able to cr pump up the crowd. You had your meter. The shit's back, guys, and that goes right hand-in-hand hand with some of the great things I think they're doing, you know, picking some things from old games that people liked and bringing them here into the new age, and they're doing that again. Home field advantage is back, and they expanded it to be really impactful. Each home stadium is graded out to different levels, so the big house will have a bigger impact on players than, you know, the center park system, a.k.a. Turner Field in Atlanta. Freshmen will get rattled, communication gets harder, and, yes, squiggly lines are back but even more aggressive. They start moving all over the place like you're playing the game on acid. It's a damn trip, and you'll struggle to make audibles and hot routes if you don't have a quarterback with the right mental abilities. 
uh, showed off in presentation. They created this moment from a Penn State game. And it was one of the coolest things I've seen. And yes, they got Mo Bamba licensed in the game. I'm not going to play that for copyright reasons here on YouTube, uh, but you guys can check it out in the article if you'd like. I think some fans will think they went a little bit too far with Stadium Pulse and like wear and tear. I'd expect some tuning from EA along the way, uh, but I like the fact that it makes an impact. If you have a freshman in real life on the road, chances are they're going to get overwhelmed. You better find a way to quiet things down or else things will get scary for your guys. And here, right here, guys, player abilities and badges. This right here is the first sentence. You know, it's something I've been clamoring for on here. You guys have heard me fucking talk about this a shit ton, not wanting X factors in the game. Let's not make it like Madden X factor, something I hate from Madden. You know, someone asked me while I was doing my last Madden stream, if there's one thing you could change, what would it be? It was X factors. And, you know, I was hoping they were going this way and they are no X factors in college football, 25, like Madden. But each player will have five physical abilities and three mental abilities that you can build up to get situational boosts. They're archetype limited, which means you can't max everything out to keep it true to the college game. There are not guarantees to help you out, unlike Madden X Factors. That means there's a chance uh, your big play receiver won't make the catch in traffic in a big moment, even if he has that ability. The mental abilities are interesting and important because of home field advantage. Having a quarterback that can handle the road atmosphere will be critical, and it's going to make players think twice about thrusting a freshman in a starting role early because they have some physical attributes you like. Confidence and composure will make a difference in how well a player performs. Coaches will also have abilities, which will calm their team down on the road and give the team situational boost as well which goes into pre-snap recognition here which kind of ties in there you know with the abilities you know you have a more senior quarterback versus a younger quarterback this is going to be you know how that kind of functions quarterbacks with strong mental abilities will be able to diagnose coverages before the snap and will tell you what they see in terms of coverage so if they see a cover four a cover four will appear over the two corners and the safeties however they won't be right every time and defenses can disguise coverages to try and confuse a QB by showing one thing and then going into something else at the snap audibles, hot routes, protection slides, and custom stems. Now, this is some cool shit, guys, that we haven't had before as far as the amount of kind of detail that we have pre-snap to be able to adjust things. The amount of stuff you can do with the line of scrimmage is now pretty incredible. It's no longer just audibles and hot routes. As you can slide your protection at the line of scrimmage to pick up blitzers and customize routes completely for your receivers with custom stems. If you want a guy to run a 35-yard post for some reason, you can do it. If you want to turn a 5-yard dig into a 10-yard dig, that's a couple button pushes away. The protection slide is particularly cool as you can do full slides and half slides, so you can adjust you know, only one part of your line. But beware because if you misdiagnose a blitz and slide to the right and someone's coming from the left, the computer's not going to bail you out and pick that up. They would say what they do in real life and go where they're told, leaving a quarterback one-on-one -on -one with the blitzer. So it makes pre-snap adjustments even more important in this game. You'll have to be cognizant of the play clock because if you spend too much time customizing the line, you'll of course get delay a game. Defensive switch stick. So this is also something that I thought was really cool. Um, you know, you used to have to hit, you know, depending on which console, circle, or B to switch players. And you didn't really know who exactly they were going to switch to. And so then you kind of just had to learn the cycle of what player comes out when, and you had to learn how many buttons you're going to have to, times you're going to have to push the button to switch to a certain defender. They've now changed that because you flip the stick in the direction of the player you want to take control of, and it will take you to that player. For those that have right stick dexterity, this will allow you to effectively play with two guys in coverage. You can quickly flip from one to another and cover half the field as a user. I will admit defense has never been my strong suit in video game football, so it wasn't super effective for me. Uh, that's probably going to be something that has a learning curve for sure. And then, of course, the new kicking system now as well. College kickers make their arrival into the game in a big way as the new kicking system has a side-to-side -side meter. Oh, that's interesting. So that's something that we haven't had before. You know, we've had the A push button. We've had the right stick flip, but it was always vertical. So a big change here. No longer the old right stick or the Madden L-shaped meter that has red, yellow, and green in the, in the zone. The meter will move faster on kicks from further away, making it more difficult to hit 50 and uh, 40 and 50 plus yard kicks. Once you hit AX and land in the zone, you hold it down to fill up the meter on the arrow for your kick power. If you go into the red, you'll lose distance. Like everything else, now the kicking system is all based on your kicker's skill, ratings, and attributes. So I Obviously, that's going to affect how the meter moves and, of course, probably the length of the meter. Um, so that's interesting. And then weather impacts. As they noted in the presentation, wet footballs matter. That means if you end up in a rain game or a snow game, ball security will be tricky. You'll end up with more drops. Footing on defense will be sketchy. You might end up with some chaos. From a graphics perspective, the animations for rain on the field and the way it kicks up and splashes looked incredible. But it's a real annoying when the fumble starts happening, which, again, is how it works in real life. And that's their goal. So, you know, there may be some things in here that would maybe mixed about that may need some tuning. Uh, but from what I get here, this sounds phenomenal. The detail is incredible and the realism is what I'm most excited about, guys. So that's a heavy, you know, deep dive into gameplay.